These battles for Bakhmut, Donetsk region, have been going on for six months now. Losses of Russians in this direction are estimated in tens of thousands. Most of the city is destroyed. According to military experts, Bakhmut has a no strategic importance for Russia. Then what is all of this for? This question was answered in the White House. Prigozhin and the Russian Ministry of Defense are driven by the desire to make some money. The United States is of the view that Russian President Vladimir Putin's ally Evgeny Prigozhin, who is the founder of Russia's most powerful mercenary group, is interested in taking control of salt and gypsum from mines near the Ukrainian-held city of Bakhmut. From Reuters publication. We are talking about the Artemivsky salt deposit, the largest in Europe, which is located just near Bakhmut, and also about the Artem Seal salt mines processing plant in neighboring Solidar. There, in recent weeks, the intensity of hostilities has increased. Wagner mercenaries are directly involved in them. If we talk specifically about Bakhmut and Solidar, then the main goal of the Wagner mercenaries there is to come to Putin and report that the task was completed absolutely according to plan, that Wagner PMC is fighting more effectively than the armed forces of the Russian Federation, and they want to get Bakhmut and Solidar for this, that is, their resources to plunder them. American intelligence has already recorded that Russian mercenaries were used to seize natural resource deposits in the Central African Republic, Mali and Sudan, and the Ministry of Defense of Russia is developing operations based on the economic interests of Putin's elites. One of the most immediate and growing concerns in Africa is the Kremlin-backed Wagner Group's strategy of exploiting the natural resources of the Central African Republic, Mali and Sudan, as well as other countries. These actions are thoroughly documented and irrefutable. These ill-gotten gains are used to fund Moscow's war machine in Africa, the Middle East and Ukraine. Linda Thomas Greenfield, United States Ambassador to the United Nations, from a speech at a UN Security Council briefing. There have been similar cases in the Middle East. For example, in 2017, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad ratified a contract with the Russian engineering construction company Stroy Transgas, allowing the extraction and export of phosphates to deposit near Palmyra. However, at the time of the signing of this treaty, the location of the mines was still captured by Islamic militants. And a few months later, Suravikin, who at that time commanded Russian troops in Syria, reported to Putin about the Libyan of this territory. 78 oil and gas fields and two deposits of phosphate ores have been liberated. However, it will not be so easy with Bakhmut. Neither the Ministry of Defense nor the Wagner PMC is able to capture the city, military experts say. Prigozhin, in an attempt to justify himself for the failures in this area, even began to publicly praise the Ukrainian defense. Bakhmut is a fortress, and that's why my servicemen are struggling. Sometimes they fight for weeks only for one house. To break through the defense means to take one house this morning and break through the Ukrainian defense. But behind that house there is another defense, and not the only one. And in the case of the Bakhmut Solidar bridgehead, the enemy army needs to attract so much human, technical, financial resources and so on for this, that these settlements are not of such a great strategic importance as resources are. First of all, the equipment that will be spent on these tasks, a huge amount has already been spent. According to the expert, the Russians are very far from capturing Bakhmut. The Russian excuses, which sound more and more often, indicate that the Kremlin understands this and is preparing the ground for pacifying the fanatical supporters of their regime after another goodwill gesture. Reported by Dana Kulasnik, Vasil Panasyuk, UATV News.